A while back I released a video called Tips for Photographing Forest Birds and since spring and summer is coming up very quickly I think this is a perfect time for me to do an update to that. And with that comes the first tip which is learn your bird calls. Especially during this time of year, this period, birds are incredibly vocal and their vocalizations mean a lot of different things. They could be looking for a mate, they could be interacting with their mate, uh, territorial calls, alarm calls, interacting with the chicks. And there's just so many things that are going on that if you don't really understand what the calls are or what the calls are coming from, it could be really difficult to sift through everything and know what you want to photograph. When I first started birding, I think the general path is you kind of learn the birds by sight first, and then little by little you learn calls along the way. And when I would first go out with the camera, every little pish, every little chirp or anything, I'm moving my camera around trying to find the bird because I don't know what it is. And it could get really hectic, especially in the spring and summertime. And I know if you're first starting out and getting into bird calls, there's just so many songs to learn. But I would kind of focus on two groups. The first group is just the most common species. So you can take your 20, 30, or 40 most common birds in your area. That's a great starting point because you're going to hear those songs regularly. And also if you don't necessarily want to photograph those birds, uh, you can kind of hear the call and know not to target them. Here in Eastern Canada, summer is not very long. So if I have the option to not chase a cardinal for a few hours through the woods, I'm gonna take it. I wanna get the birds that are only here for a really short period. And then in the other group would be birds that you actually wanna see and photograph. So on one hand, you have your most common species. And on the other hand, you have all your targets. And the reason that this is so important, especially in a forest is because you have dense brush, dense foliage, you're often gonna hear birds a lot more frequently than you see them. And I guarantee you, if you learn your bird calls, you're gonna find more species in your area that were there all along, but you just never realized it. I think it's really easy for us to get caught up on what photography gear we're using, but photography gear changes from year to year and more recently, actually month to month, every month something new is coming out. But bird behavior, bird songs, bird habitat preference, those are constants. Those things you learn once and you'll carry with you for the rest of your life. And although the three things I just mentioned seemingly have nothing to do with bird photography, in my case anyways, I think it's actually the thing that has propelled my bird photography the most. And while we're talking about behavior, especially at this time of year, I think it's important to talk about nesting behavior. So during the summer when I'm working, one of the main things that I do is nest surveys. And although we're really looking for the nest so we can identify exactly where it is, one of the main things we're also looking for is nesting behavior. If you're ever walking through the forest and you see a bird collecting a lot of insects in its beak, it's likely going to bring that back to the female or to the chicks. And you know roughly that's going to be the hunting territory it's going to use for the rest of the season. So with that information as a photographer, you're able to revisit that same patch as long as you're not disturbing them. You're able to revisit and get a lot of different types of photographs of both the female, the male, and the chicks. When I was in Ecuador, I made a video on how I went about photographing a red-headed barbet cavity nest. And I just went through my whole thought process and I tried to show you guys how to do it ethically. So I definitely think you should go check that out if you want more information. But even if you're really far away from the nest, there's still a lot of things that you can photograph. So the nest, the footprint of the nest is usually pretty small for songbirds, but the territory around it is much larger. And what that means is from afar, you can photograph the territory around the nest as it progresses throughout the season. So you can start from them building the nest, so bringing in natural materials, all the way to the chicks actually fledging and following the parents around for food. And putting in the work to find these territories could potentially benefit you for two, five, ten years down the line, because if this same pair returns, they're likely going to go to the exact same area that they nested in the previous year. In the first forest bird photography video I made, I spoke about how you're more likely to find more species along the edge of the forest and along ecotones. And one thing that you can do with that to use it to your advantage is before you get into a park, especially if you're going right before sunrise, you can drive around the park a few times if there's a road and really see where the species are in the park and also take advantage of your car as a blind. I like to use this technique in the morning especially because if I were out in the forest there's likely not enough light anyways. One thing I will suggest is if you're going out on a cooler morning make sure you don't have the heat blasting in the car because once you roll down your windows you're going to get this weird heat distortion messing with your images so make sure the temperature inside and outside the car is relatively the same but try it out yourself see if you like it i don't think it's for everybody but using this technique is a great alternative to walking in the forest when the conditions aren't right while we're on the topic of walking in the forest one thing that i would look out for especially if you're into raptors is whitewash 
Raptors will often use the same perch for roosting or for hunting, and as they continue to use it, they'll obviously defecate every day, and what happens is you get this whitewash that happens either along a branch, along the trunk of a tree, maybe on the leaves below it, maybe on a rock, wherever their favorite perch is, that's where you're gonna see this whitewash, and even if the bird isn't around when you find it, as long as it looks relatively fresh within the last few days, they're likely gonna to return to that area. So if you know the birds in this tree, you know the branch it's using, you can walk around, find the best angle, find your best background, where the light's coming from, and set up over maybe a couple days, over a couple weeks, revisit the spot, and you can use it to anticipate behavior and possibly get a great photo. Speaking of anticipating behavior, that's what the next tip is all about. I think when we find a bird that we really want to photograph, sometimes we just plant our feet, we get tunnel vision, and we just start ripping off shots. And a lot of times that initial place that we stopped in to take the photo is usually not the best place to be taking a photo. I mean, it's obviously great to get those initial shots, but I know for me anyways, that's one thing I struggled with was, you know, kind of breaking out of this trance that you're in of photographing this bird and start moving around and realizing that you need to anticipate what the bird's gonna do and not just take advantage of where it is now. If a bird is not in a great setting, if it's not on a good branch or there's not a good background or it's extremely skittish or it's really far away and every time I'm moving, it's pushing it farther, what I like to do is just evaluate what that bird is, well obviously identify the species, and then identify what it's doing. Is it foraging, is it hunting, is it just moving through the woods? And what I can do then is try to predict where that bird's going to go. And what that means is sometimes walking really far away, obviously keeping the bird maybe in your peripherals, but walking really far away and looping around to a spot where you think the bird's gonna come to you. I think doing this has made me more observant in the field and has definitely helped me progress my bird photography. So I encourage you to do something similar instead of always chasing the bird and trying to get closer, try just putting yourself in a position where the birds are gonna to come to you. And with that, I hope you guys enjoyed this second video on tips for forest bird photography. If you wanna learn more about bird photography or about birding, I'll put up two playlists here for you guys to check out and I'll see you in the next video. Happy birding.